Hello everyone. Most of the exciting hardware in the world of filmmaking is aimed at production. Cameras, gimbals, lights. Well, in post-production, equipment is just as important. But most of the stuff we use is general purpose computers and peripherals like monitors and mice. Well, we are always particularly interested when manufacturers produce hardware that is specifically for editing. The Loop Deck is one of those pieces of hardware. This interface allows you to control programs like Premiere Pro, After Effects and Final Cut Pro with physical dials, buttons and touch interfaces. The objective? To make editing quicker, more intuitive and maybe a little more enjoyable. To be precise, this is the Loop Deck CT. Sorry, I feel like I'm going to end up saying Loop Deck a lot. Loop Deck makes several models. Some are better suited to photo editing, others to live streaming. The CT is best for editing. Is it good? Yes. We wouldn't feature it if it wasn't. The better question is, is it right for you? Well, only you can answer that, but maybe our experiences and thoughts can be of help. Quick note, for a steady stream of new tutorials from professional Hollywood editors, be sure to subscribe to the Film Editing Pro channel and turn on notifications. The panel features a USB-C connection and comes with a USB-C to USB-A cable. I'm using Mac OS, but I haven't seen anything to make me think that the experience would be dramatically different on Windows. The panel will do absolutely nothing until its driver is installed. This driver sits between the panel and the program that you're hoping to control. What kind of programs can you control with your new Loop Deck? There are two different groups. The first. Lots of software developers release APIs that allow third parties like Loop Deck to make cool add-on products. Adobe have APIs for their software. Apple has an API for Final Cut Pro. Brilliant. Because of that, Loop Deck has been able to create profiles for controlling these programs that integrate really tightly. Loop Deck calls these their default profiles. If you have any programs on that list installed, Loop Deck will find them automatically. The second group. If you have a program that isn't natively supported by Loop Deck, you can manually install a custom profile. Now these aren't as tightly integrated as the default profiles. And sadly, Loop Deck does not have access to Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve's API. So compatibility there is very poor. For a full list of supported programs, please go to Loop Deck's site. My experience installing the software was pretty seamless. It found all my Creative Suite programs and helped me to install required plugins from the Creative Cloud desktop app. And it also found Final Cut Pro. The software is clever. As you switch between different programs, it will adjust the Loop Deck to always display relevant buttons. We'll talk more about the software later, but for now, let's talk about the panel. The panel is really nicely made, and thanks to its weight and rubber feet, it stays put on your desk. Let's start by talking about the master dial at the bottom. It rotates smoothly, and this screen inside is also a touch interface. Now at the moment, it functions as a scroll wheel. When we get into Premiere and Final Cut, it moves the playhead around. These soft buttons in the middle are divided into pages. I get stuff like a clock, volume controls, program launchers, media controls. They work pretty much as you'd expect. It will also display these controls if you are in a program it doesn't have a profile configured for. On the sides, we have six clicky dials. You can change which page of buttons is displayed with these numbered buttons below. These first four are illuminated. That means in the profile I currently have selected, there are four different pages of soft buttons that I can access. There are other physical buttons. They feel just like keys on a keyboard. Most of these buttons have more than one function. We've got some other cool keys, undo, cursor keys, enter. Additional commands can be activated by holding down on the function key and clicking on these keys. If you are unsure about what any of these buttons do, the Loop Deck software is very helpful. Hover over the buttons and it will tell you what they are currently configured to do. Most of my time with the Loop Deck has been spent in Premiere Pro. The default profile for Premiere has pages set up for editing, color, and audio. Here's a few highlights. Once my edit is assembled in the timeline, I love skimming through using the master wheel and the ripple trim tools. I'll get both hands on the Loop Deck for this, one on the master wheel and one on the ripple controls. I've never been a big fan of Premiere's Lumetri color grading interface, but the Loop Deck helps. By selecting different soft buttons, various controls are mapped to the clicky dials and master wheel. Some features are more helpful than others. I found the implementation of curves to be a little bit bizarre. The audio page was a little less helpful. 
A lot of these soft buttons replicate features that I can already control with my keyboard. However, I did like the dedicated dial for audio track height and being able to use the master wheel to navigate and manipulate audio keyframes. Some features are implemented better than others, but given how haphazard Premiere's interface already is, this might not be Loop Deck's fault. Customizing the panel is easy. Head into the Loop Deck app. You can edit an existing workspace or create your own. I'll set the number four button to load my new workspace. To assign a Premiere function to the panel, find it in this list and drag it onto the virtual panel. I could, for example, set up a workspace for multicam editing. So what do I think? The hardware is beautifully made, it's really high quality, and it's slender enough to pack into your bag and take on the road. My favourite thing about the Loop Deck has to be the dials. Why? Because they do something that my keyboard and mouse cannot. I love being able to do things like slip or nudge the clips, adjust volume, adjust the zoom. In fact, the zoom dial might be worth the cost of admission alone. Thanks to the screen as well, I always know what the dials are currently configured to control. And once my memory kicks in, the buttons are tactile enough and easy to find without looking. The master dial makes it possible to navigate your edit in a way that is dramatically more intuitive than your keyboard or mouse. It is very satisfying to jog back and forth over an edit point as you perfect your cut. The least helpful feature, at least for me, has to be the physical keys. Sure, if I'm already doing something on the loop deck, it saves me a trip back to my regular keyboard but it has all the same disadvantages of hotkeys on my regular keyboard. The physical button offers no reminder of what command is assigned, and these only start to speed up my work once muscle memory has kicked in. The soft keys are good, but there is a sweet spot where they are most helpful. I liked using them to access commands that I don't use enough to remember the keyboard hotkey, but are cumbersome to find with a mouse in the menus. It's not necessarily quicker to scroll through the pages to find the correct button than it is to use the mouse to navigate through menus on the screen. But when you are using a mouse all day long, it is pleasant to be able to use a different input device. Is it for you? It's hard to say. As intuitive as the Loop Deck is, there is a learning curve if you want to truly maximize its power. I've got decades of practice using a mouse. I've got about a month's worth of practice using the Loop Deck. So which do you think I'm more effective with? It takes some persistence to retrain your muscle memory to go for the Loop Deck rather than use the mouse or keyboard. There are two groups in particular that we think might appreciate the Loop Deck. The first, new editors. They don't have decades of habits to unlearn to integrate the Loop Deck into their workflow. The default button layouts created by Loop Deck will actually help you to discover and learn features of your NLE. The second group is experienced editors looking to further optimize their workflow, especially ones with highly specific workflows. They will appreciate the ability to completely customize the Loop Deck, giving physical controls or buttons to their most used features. It's nice to see accessories designed specifically for editors, and it does look cool on the desk. If you work primarily in Premiere Pro, After Effects or Final Cut Pro, or make extensive use of other Adobe Suite programs, this panel is for you. If you use Resolve, this panel is not for you. You should buy the Blackmagic Speed Editor. The Loop Deck is not a must-have accessory, and it might not revolutionize your workflow. For me at least, it wasn't a quantum leap in productivity. It was an incremental increase, and only once I put in the effort required to adjust my habits. At the end of the day, it's not perfect, and it might not make your work quicker, but it might make editing more enjoyable. And that has got to be worth something. Hey there, for tons more free editing training, head over to our website at filmeditingpro.com slash free training. Here you can download free editing guides along with high quality video training courses created by our team of professional Hollywood editors. Our tutorials cover a wide range of editing topics, like cutting awesome movie trailers, editing action scenes, how to work with music and sound design, and a lot more. All of these free guides and videos are available at filmeditingpro.com slash free training. I'll see you next time.